service of a precious and beloved brother Samuel Bailey and we are taking this opportunity to welcome you online who are also taking note, notice of this service today God bless you we want to bow our heads in prayer at this time asking God's presence and blessing among us. Shall we pray? O oh, Father in heaven, how we look to you. We look to you because you are the source of all life. And in you we live and move and have our very existence. So we look to you today. We look to you at this time of evening and ask for your divine presence among us. We want you to take full control from pulpit to pew. And everyone that is participating in the service today, we're asking for your divine presence and grace to take charge of each life. Thank you for the family of brother Samuel strengthen each member of the family today that the hand of the Lord prevail as we ask these things in no other name but in the name that is above every name and we all say amen God bless you this evening we do have as our chairperson Deacon Dean Alexis and he's coming forth at this time to take us from here let's welcome him please Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And it's, you know, never a nice feeling to come into services like this because you are here to say farewell, goodbye to a dearly beloved brother, sister, friend. Today it's our brother, Samuel Bailey. But nevertheless, we are thankful that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think according to the spirit that worketh in us. And he loves us so much 
that he died that each of us could live and today we celebrate the life of our brother because we know he's in the presence of almighty God he served him while he was yet alive on earth and I know he's not disappointed today I am happy on me in the inside because I know he's in a, the best place so even though we may sorrow don't sorrow to the point that you will not see him again we will see him again so we want to go into our song and we have a hymn we have an anchor and in your song sheet or rather your program uh, that song is there so you can follow us and we want to say also welcome to those who are on the the internet viewing us around the world we say good afternoon and welcome to you so we want to do this song or him rather we have an anchor will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife when the strong tides lift and the cables strain will your anchor drift or firm remain will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife when the strong tides lift and the cables rain will your anchor drift or firm remain we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roar fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love it is safely moored till the straits stand for tis well secured by the Savior's hand and the cables passed from his heart to mine can defy that blast through strength divine we have an anchor we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll passing to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love it will surely hold in the straits of fair when the breakers have grief is near though the tempest rave and the wild wind blow not an angry wave shall our back overflow we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fast unto the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love it will firmly hold in the floods of death when the waters call chill all latest breath on the rising tide it can never fail while our hopes abide within the veil we have we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love when our eyes behold through the gathering night the city of gold our harbor light 
We shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore With the storms all past forevermore We have an anchor that keeps the soul Steadfast and sure while the billows roar Fastened to the rock which cannot move Grounded firm and deep in We'll sing the chorus one last time We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love bless the Lord we thank God for his goodness that we have an anchor and that anchor is Jesus Christ irrespective of the storms that are wrong that anchor holds and you need to fasten your anchor to that rock amen that rock is Jesus bless the name you may have your seats kindly whenever I'm in church regardless of the circumstance I feel like I'm in church so forgive me sometimes I lift my spirit a bit regardless of the circumstance we are not here to sing to the dead our brother yes we want him to be alive but he's alive in God in the heavens we are on the earth so when we sing when we rejoice we are rejoicing because we are alive eh? It could have been one of us that this service would have been held for. But thank God we are yet alive and in the land of the living. I want to, at this time, just make some announcements. Most of you are very familiar with our COVID rules and regulations that have been stipulated by the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And I just want to let you know that as much as we would have liked to have more persons on the inside because of the limitations, we cannot uh, allow too many persons. Nevertheless, we want you to maintain your distances while you can. And likewise, if you have to leave the building, there are some exit signs and um, we want you to take the nearest exit but we prefer that you take the exit just to the back of you on your right and you can go on the outside and when you come back and you come back where you would have entered all right so that we can sanitize again and have you to keep all of us safe while we are in the building all right likewise we want you to know that the restrooms are on the, my right on the outside so if you want to get to the outside same uh, applies you go to the exit good and then you can return all right so we want to make it as comfortable and as as you know safe for you while you're in here persons who will come to the microphone we will make a microphone that is sanitized for you so that you can make your contribution when that time would have come also want to pay greetings to our assistant bishop here in Tobago Pawi district in the person of Reverend Wayne Kwashi all the way from the Calvary Road Deliverance Temple it's nice having you sir with us and other family members who are close we want to say welcome and to make your contribution pay your last respects to a great great brother at this point in time we want to go into the scripture reading and that scripture reading would be taken from the the epistle of first Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18 and it will be done by Aziel Grandison so we want to have 
Aziel come to do that? Good afternoon, everyone. The scripture reading this afternoon is taken from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. And it reads, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will arise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with him, be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Here end that scripture reading. Thank you so much. That reading was not done by Aziel, but Suzanne Jack. So we thank you so much, Suzanne. At this point, we want to have a special song. And that special song will be done by Kazia Cooper. Uh, is Kazia Cooper here and ready? Okay, she is, so... Kazia Cooper will come to now do a special song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fail me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. For all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest days, you are closer than no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I will live in the goodness of God. Oh yes, for all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every In the goodness of God, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender all, I give you is running after it's running after me and no more 
my life you have been faithful Oh my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I'm going to sing in the goodness of God yes i will sing in the goodness of God hallelujah Yes, one. Thank you so much. Let me just put, make sure I put the handle right. So it's that song was done by Mrs. Kazia Cooper Bailey. All right. Bless the Lord. That's the daughter-in-law of or deceased Samuel Bailey. Actually, if you follow the program earlier, you should have seen or you would have seen worship team because we were carried to have our worship team to be here and for some reason most of them would have been in contact with somebody who have been in contact so some of them were placed on quarantine so they couldn't be here today unfortunately but one of the things that I know about this man that we are now celebrating Samuel Bill is that he loved to sing he loved to to be in action he never sit quietly he's always moving because he likes to have what we call rhythm he loved rhythm in fact coming later on you will hear some more of him as a person who would have played a musical instrument that we locally call the mouth organ or which is known as the harmonica and he played that instrument with vigor and he just loved playing that instrument so whenever he came into this house and had the occasion to play he would sweat because of the energy that he put into playing that instrument so in a fitting to this man we want to sing another song all right i know it's not on your program but we want to celebrate a life that has done so much while he was alive and here in this particular area of Plymouth where he worshiped, where he, he was a part of this, this assembly or ministry. So we want to sing a song and they say, great is our God. I don't know, there are so many versions. So you may have to come and help me, Sister Gail. Oh, Minister Gale will come and help me. And if they can put it on the screen while we're doing it, because if someone, one of the songs will be well known, we can place it on the screen so that you can follow it. So that I myself can follow, all right? Okay, it's a chorus kind of. How great is our God? How great is his name? Let's stand together. You know, we'll be seated for a while. All right. You can put your hands together. I know the mask will sometimes muffle your, your, your speech, but your hands are not tied. Let's, let's clap and sing unto the Lord. How great is our God? How great is his name? How great is our God? How great is his name? How great is our God? He's ever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. He said, I'll be with you, only trust in me. How great is our God, how great is his name. How great is our God, he's ever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. He said, I'll be with you, only 
trust in one more time how great is our god how great is his name how great is our god he's ever the same he rolled by the waters of the mighty red sea he said i'll be with you only trust in me god god is god and he always will be god god is god and he always will be god he's the god of the fiery furnace he's the god of the he's the god of the whole creation he's the god in the heart of man god is god and he always will be god god is god and he always will be god he's the god of the fiery furnace he's the god of the lion's den he's the god of the whole creation he's the god in the hearts of men i'm bound 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 for higher ground i'm seeking a golden crown i'm gonna leave this world someday i'm bound for higher ground i'm bound 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 for higher ground i'm seeking a golden crown i'm gonna leave this world someday i'm bound for higher ground oh i'm bound 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 for higher ground i'm seeking a golden crown i'm gonna leave this world someday i'm bound for higher ground But he's alive. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May we have your seats kindly. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Well, according to the tributes, we have one coming from Dean Alexis. But I will just forego that just for a while to allow for Reverend Wayne Kwashi, the assistant bishop of Pawi to come and bring tributes to, or make his tributes at this time. Praise the Lord. What is a pleasant good evening, good afternoon to everyone present here today. I'm here representing, you know, our district, the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies Tobago District. And I'm also representing myself along with my family. All right. And I really want to really thank God for Samuel's life. We went way back. We did um, trade work together, you know, as carpenters, you know, we were both carpenters at the time. So many of you may not know me as a carpenter. 
I'm a carpenter joiner by trade. And to say that that could have been somewhere around the 80s, around 82, 83, you know, somewhere around there because I went into Bible school in 88. So within that period, okay, Billy and I, you know, we spent a lot of time together working. And, you know, his life has really been, you know, a blessing, you know, to me because you know definitely that he was a man of God. He loved the Lord and he was really passionate, you know, about his Savior, about his Lord. And he really lived the life, you know, that he needed to live. I remember one time when we were working at Marysville, we were building a house, a board house in Marysville. And we went down, we went to get something to drink by the parlor. And the lady who was selling, you know, she was saying, you know, there's just something about you two guys that she just couldn't put her hands on. And what we'll say is that because of the life we live, because of the Holy Spirit that was living in us, you know, our light had to shine. And it did shine. Because the word of God says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. And, you know, we were determined to really live our lives, you know, to please God. And that is the kind of life that Bailey, you know, would have lived because I call him Bailey, all right? That's the life that he would have lived. And, you know, it was, I knew that he got sick the, the first time around, all right? And, you know, he got over the sickness. But then he came out and was really moving and moving well. And it could have been about what? Well, I mean, it could have been about... Two months ago, I met you all by the mall. Yeah. And Bill was all sprightly, you know, giving me jokes and all kind of thing, you know, about this bishop thing and what and what. So it's Saturday talking to, or Saturday or Friday? Yeah. I was talking to your bishop, Pastor Allen. And he was saying to me, by the way, you know, your friend gone. I said, who friend is that? What friend? Who is that? And he keep telling me, your friend gone. And then after he told me that, Bailey, Bailey has gone. He has passed. So that was a little shocking to me. Right? But I know that the life that Bailey would have lived, you know, he would have pleased this God. And, you know, I think about Bailey. You're a man who really loved the Lord, also loved his wife. Because since I know Bailey, it's Bailey and Willie. I usually call her Willie. All right? So that's how I call her Willie Mina. So instead of saying Willie Mina, you know, I will say Willie. All right? So from since then, the time that I really got to know them, and to this day, you know, at his passing, you know, they were always together. They really loved each other. They stood with each other. Something that you are not really seeing nowadays, where couples are remaining together, but they stuck it out. And I know, Will, it will be a little tough for you at this time, all right? But God continue to be your strength. He continue to be your shield. You will be the father you need. You will be the husband you need, the brother you need. Everything that you need in Christ, it will be that to you and much more. And I just want to encourage you and encourage the children, you know, to stay close to each other. Continue to serve the Lord. Hold on to your Jesus. Don't let him go. Let the Lord continue to be the strength of your life. Continue to be encouraged, you know, through the word. I know it's difficult because I just have two young ladies who lost their husbands. You know, and they just cannot catch themselves as yet. They just cannot. All right? So every time they remember, you know, their husband, the tears. So they just kind of catch themselves yet. And I just don't know how long that will take, you know. But God is good. God is good. So the Lord is going to give you the strength as you go on. So on behalf of, you know, the Tobago District, the bishop and the Tobago District, along with my family, we just want to extend our condolences 
And may the Lord continue to give you the strength that you need. The scripture says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So the blessings of the Lord be with you. Thank you so much, Bishop Reverend Wayne Kwashi, for your tribute. And on your program, the next person would have, or is, Dean Alexis, yours truly, to do tribute. And normally I would write something, but I have known this man for most of my life, especially in this church and in the village where I come from, that village called Lake Oto, where we had so many times to interface with each other and to rub shoulders with each other. And I sometimes go back so far as to when we were playing football, playing cricket. This man, he was so excited about everything that he does or did. You know, I remember the humorous parts because I love humor. And I remember once we were about to form a cricket team. That's church cricket, that's it. And um, we talked about playing against another church. So we decided we have to go and practice. The minute we said we were going to play cricket, we had no equipment, nothing. All we decided was just to form a team to play cricket. And in a blink, Bailey came by me. Ding, ding, ding. And I'm only trying to gesticulate sometimes how he would come over. Ding, ding, ding. When are we are playing the cricket? And I'm keep telling, well, we just formed this side. We ain't know yet when we played the cricket. And in a blink again, he comes back. And he bought a pair of gloves. Wicked keeper gloves. And he bought a pair of gloves, which is junior size for those guys who we play what we call the secondary school cricket. It was a small size glove. And I started to laugh because we were male, grown males, and we were putting our hands in, in junior gloves to we could keep. But he was so excited that he didn't even ask the right size of gloves. He just wanted to get the show on the road. You talk about football, this man, you couldn't pass him. He was nicknamed the grass cutter. Because whether the, the pitch was grass or stone, it didn't matter. When you came at Bailey, Bailey's coming at you. And he said, if he doesn't get the ball, he makes sure he's going to get you. And that's the kind of fierce competitor he was. Because he put all his energies into it. As a carpenter, I worked with him sometimes as a laborer years, years ago. And he would not sit still. When we are saying, Bailey, it's time to take a break. No, no break, no break. We got to get the work done. And he always has the heaviest tools. He prides himself in boasting about his hammers. When everybody may have an 18 ounce hammer, he has a 20 or 22 ounce. He wants a big hammer. And he's always doing the work. Rain or shine. If he's coming to the job and he has to be there for seven Half past six, he's there ready. He's waking you off your bed if you're sleeping. He was a gentleman that was committed. Committed in everything. Even here at church, as a member of the men's ministries, you know, he served in various capacity in, 
in the men's department, president once and vice president and so on. And he was said, gentlemen, gentlemen, how we have to do the work? How we not want the pastor for victory, how we? And he will work from sun up to sundown if needs be. He will leave his regular job and hasten to come here to work on this building and the other buildings. And he gave a hundred percent. He was a he was a stickler for work, and he was not ever afraid of any type of job. When it comes to 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 evangelism and and opening and crusades. It doesn't matter. He will find himself there to give moral support, to erect the tent and to take it back down and to put up the, the, the stages and to do all the work. Brother Bailey was committed. You know, when we were looking for a place to have Sunday school in the earlies, he was the first guy who said, come use my home. He opened up his home when others when may not have. Talking about garden work. Oh, he loved bush. We call it bush. He doesn't talk about planting, you know, like crops and vegetables. He just said, plant food. Men come like we plant some food. And he's always there. The heaviest cutlass is his. The sharpest cutlass is his and no matter how thick the bush is but I'll be able to just go in and just start to cut down he worked here in this church as I said we will miss him because every program that we had had to involve him playing the harmonica as I said before he was sweat he will wipe his brow from the sweat that's perspiring down his body because he's always moving. He wants the rhythm. And whenever you didn't play right for him, well, that's the next story. Because he will leave grumpy. Me and I couldn't play the rhythm there, boy. Me and I couldn't play the rhythm. Because he's always wanting to play. Play for the honor and glory of God. And I leave with this, because there's so much, but I leave with this. One thing I admired about this man, sometimes some people can be so unassuming, but this man was dedicated to family. Whenever you see him in any public gathering, you see his wife, and when they were much smaller, his children with them. Everywhere they will go, they will pack their bags, go in the vehicle and drive somewhere, go have a picnic, go do something together. And he always talk about his wife, Mina. Mina. Buy me a for care of this one, Mina. He's always talking about them. Sister Bailey, you had a husband. You had a husband, not just a man, but a husband. He took care of his family. He ensured that they got what is required. And he worked hard. Tirelessly. Sometimes I think they say hard work don't kill. I believe hard work kills. Because to be giving your body all that every day, day on, day out, day on, day out. Without the necessary rest sometimes. Can be very destructive for our bodies. So sometimes it's a, it's a advice that we men sometimes have to take. The women sometimes much better than us. But we men sometimes go unchecked. But I know this man, all that he would have done, God will reward him. He may not have gotten all the rewards here on earth. All his hard work may not have been given the kind of kudos that it deserved. But God will be rewarding him. He's the reward of them that diligently seeks him. So this evening I want to thank.
the Baileys. Because when sometimes I need somebody to talk with, Bailey was that man. Fishing, football, sports, church work, whatever. Bailey was that man. And I will miss the Christmas cooks and all the fun that we will have. Christmas Eve nights never went by without us. He coming. Dean, are we a cook? Are we a cook tonight? Me get a pigged. My last humor before I close. I know I've been long, but forgive me. Because he has been a dear friend. Years, years, we used to be cooking Christmas Eve nights and we always wanted to decide now what we go cook. So we used to cook hog head and, or pig head for those who don't understand hog head and other meats, you know. One year, Billy decided he's going to cook rabbit. And that was years, so he decided to rear some rabbits and he rears and Christmas coming and Billy said, yeah, the rabbit, they're ready, the rabbit, they're ready. So time to kill the rabbits. <laughs> Billy was so fond of the rabbits. He can't kill the rabbit. <laughs> so I'm calling him, you kill the rabbit yet? <laughs> and he said, no, nah, we don't kill the rabbit yet. I said, what are you waiting for? He ain't telling me that, you know, he's so soft. His heart got so soft now for the rabbit. So he calling me over. When you come, when you come. So I said, I'll be coming in a while. When he ain't see me, calling me. When I come over, I see Billy. He ain't kill the rabbit yet. I say, what happened? He said, buy me can't kill the rabbit. As tough as he was, he had that softness. And today we lost one of those gems. But thanks be to God. He knows what he's doing. And I know Bailey is in the arms of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to do the offering. And we will sing a song. I left my, my program. We will do the offering. And right after that, then we will do the eulogy. So are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? That's the song. It's also in your song sheet or your program rather. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? And we will have our ushers. They will come through and take the offerings from you. Amen. Bless the Lord. So we'll sit for this one. Have you been to Jesus? Have you been? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? This hour, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will 
Have your soul be ready for the mansions bright. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Last stanza. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin And be washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb Are you what? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Are you washed? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Bless the Lord. Father, we thank you for the offering that your people have given. We pray that it will be used for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we want to have the eulogy, and the eulogy will be done by Shinik Bailey Defoe. So, can we have Miss Defoe to come and do the eulogy? Good afternoon, family, friends, and well-wishers. I am indeed heartbroken over the passing of my dear uncle, but I am grateful for the opportunity to reflect on his life today. As we meet to say our final farewell. On July 12, 1954, Robert Van Dyke and Rema Sheila Bailey had their firstborn son, Samuel Bailey, a very kind, diligent, and responsible young man who was loved by his parents and siblings alike. When we say diligent, hardworking, kind, and tenacious, it was Samuel. When tasked with the duty of taking care of his siblings, he did so, filial fear and with loving gratitude. He murmured not. That was one of the things his mother loved about him. One Christmas, his parents made him the happiest boy in the world when they got him a harmonica, better known as the mouth organ. Pretty soon, he had a collection, which he played much to the pleasure of his family, friends, and church members. He was gifted much like his father, who was also a musician and probably played the violin. No school or music she taught them. He was definitely blessed with the talents to blow the mouth organ. One thing he was sure about getting was a call for more music. Play more, Sammy, the audience would shout, giving him a loud encore. Samuel had many pastimes. Pigeons of every race and nationality as he would jokingly say, knew Samuel because he was a pigeon boy. Much to the envy of his siblings, they were often intrigued by the way he communicated with them. Oftentimes, when he let them loose, they would come back with company. Well, yes, everybody stay in, he would say, the more the merrier. While meat hunting with his brothers, 
gardening, among other things, was some of his other favorite pastimes. And when he would ha when he had wild meat, you would know because everybody got. He would share his produce with friends, family, and neighbors. Samuel met his lovely bride, Wilhelmina, at the Buku Pentecostal Assembly. They both became intimate friends and then later married to become husband and wife. The same attributes he had at home, he passed on to his family. They were always his pride and joy. He loved taking them to island tours, which they enjoyed with pleasure. They were always excited and eager to travel with their father. Not only was he talented in the areas of carpentry, where he constructed beautiful houses, football was also one of his major talents. He was fearless on the field when representing Lescato and Mariah. The man was so talented, they called him Grass Cutter. He scored four goals, four great goals. Odell, Anson, Kishon, and Kishel. Mind you, he also scored two goals in previous games, Carleen and Christine. He was a loving, devoted father and caring, attentive husband, cheerful friend, and a diligent worker who was able to put a smile on anybody's face. Sammy boy, go up there and blow the mouth organ. Let the angels dance in glory. Them pictures would be overjoyed to see you again. May you rest in eternal peace. Check. Thank you so much again, Ms. Defoe, for the eulogy. At this time, we want to have reflections, and coming to do that is his son, Odell. We now invite Odell to come and give some reflections. Church. My name is Ode Billy. I'm the first son. I am the first son of my mother and father. That he was a good father. And he and husband. He was also a father, a family man. With, with when we were small, he would take us to many outings. My dad was a friend, and my father was a hard worker. And carry us, he would carry me on almost all of his jobs. On, sat on Sunday, when, when me and my arm, we came to church, a Sunday, I was going home back. Kishon, me, Anson, and Kishon Kishel was in the car. And we was almost home, we home. And we heard that he bought out, Mina, Mina, Mina. And all the staring and pull the staring, so, because we were going, we was, go, we was about to go in the gully. That was my, was, was driving a, we had a, a rental car, and she gave my mama, mama a drive. Um, that was the first time, that was the first and last time mom drive. Dad also used to carry us by our auntie, Phyllis, in Bethel, on weekends and still come take us home every night. Our dad was always working hard, either building, gardening, or chopping. 
he always ensured our family was providing for us. And carry us around the island when that Shell licks as small kids. He was he was a good one. I was a good one. He would send me and pull Anson and Kishon from under the bed. And Lick Shed and Lick Shed. With us with us with the belt. Those were the days. That that you Go us up in the way of the fear of the Lord. We taught us to work hard for what we want. In life, we taught us good virtues, morals, and principles to take us through life. Thank you, Dad, for will always be a part of your thoughts and our minds. We love you. We love you from our children, the Baileys and the Ken's family. Thanks. Thanks. Bless the Lord. That's from the heart of a son who's now reflecting on what his father would have done with him over the years and with them. And likewise, we have man who will come to share the words, comforting words to us. And he likewise would have shared moments with Brother Bailey as the pastor of this assembly. Because most times he'll have an interaction with him when we have to do any sort of construction, building anything around here. Call on Brother Bailey. And this man who poured into his spiritual life and to come to likewise speak to us and to comfort the heart of the family and the well-wishers and to let you know that God, the eternal God, is the one who we must serve while we are left alive. So to come to bring comforting words and to share the word from God to us is no other person than the pastor of this assembly and the pastor of our deceased and the pastor of uh, Sister Wilhelmina Bailey and the other Baileys who are here in the building. No other person than Reverend Pastor Bernard Allen. So he's going to now come and bring comforting words to us. Thank you very much, Deacon Dean Alexis. Thank you for being our chairperson this evening in this homegoing service for our beloved brother, Samuel Bailey. Of course, Of course, Samuel has truly been a live wire among the men and brethren of this church. A very active man. Yeah, very, very active man. He was a mover. He don't sit down at all. He always moving. Billy on the move. <laughs> he, in the construction of our home, he did some work at us, at our home. And he and Odell, they worked at, at our home. And you couldn't believe Bailey is the he is, or was. And he moved, always on the move. Do sit down. He would put Odell to. to, 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 to Put, put Odell in his shoes because Odell take any time. Was here they move. Odell listen. 
That was the kind of man. Of course, you heard a lot from Deacon Alexis in relation to his operations on the football field and cricket and what have you. And whether anything to be done, he's always the man. You know, want to see things happen. That was the, he was the encourager. That's the kind of guy he was. And of course, one of the <laughs> Salient things about him that I admired greatly too. Well, even before I hit that, they, you, would have, you would also observe and realize that with the skill that he has had, he passed it on to those young men, Anson, Kishon, Odell. Each of these are skillful men, well equipped by themselves to do work. So his legacy has passed on skill. And in relation to relation to his family life, he make no bones about that. I remember when he was working at the Rolox. Rolox was constructing that hotel. He used to he worked there a lot. Gave Rolox his strength. And even in that time when he did not have his own vehicle, he used to rent a vehicle on a weekend and make sure he takes this dear lady with him. Sometimes he would come in when we were at the man's here. Pastor, he'd come, come and greet us. Pass through. The pastor, me and my wife, we going out. I said, boy, I love that. Keep it up. And he, he kept that up. He was a family man. He was dear to his dear wife. I know she would greatly miss him. But he was a family man. And as Deacon Alexis says, contrary to what is happening with family life today, he was a stickler. He stuck it up. He was there with his wife. I think we need to give him a little kudos for his. Yes, yes. Yeah, he was a man of that. Greatly missed. And love. But let me go back a little bit to say, um, acknowledge my good friend, and pastor, assistant bishop of our Power District here in Tobago, Reverend Wayne Kwashi. Uh, good to have you with us. And of course, you heard he has been a good friend of Brother Bailey. I didn't even know that they were so close at one time. Glad to have you with us. It's also good to see Elder, Elder Alexis. Blessings on you, man. And the gentleman um, that we function at weddings already. Spanish is what I, I know him by. Spanish, good to see you, Spanish. God bless you. Yes. And to all of you, God bless you. It's a big welcome. Appreciate you uh, being a part of our service here today. Those of you inside the building, those of you on the outside, your presence is greatly appreciated uh, for this home-going event. God be with you. Bless you. Now, I want to share with us briefly in relation to uh, this special service for brother. Let me take the scripture reading from the book of John's Gospel, chapter 14. The first three verses I want to bring to our attention this evening. And it says, Jesus, our commander in chief, speaks. Is what he says. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? He says. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Verse 3. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Such words of comfort from our master. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportune moment to share briefly into the hearts and lives of our immediate family of our beloved brother who is born on Samuel by name. We ask you that you would take full control of the service. Thank you again for our audience, those on the inside and the outside, and those who are on the internet, on this live stream. Thank you, Father. We ask you that you would take full control of this aspect of the service. Glorify yourself, I ask, with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And we all say together, Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to share with you briefly on the subject, let not your heart be troubled. And the theme, let not your heart be troubled about death. The word troubled means to be anxious, concerned, perturbed, disturbed, Or bothered. There are some things that trouble us in this life, bother us, gets us disturbed, and death is one of those things. Every time a loved one dies, it affects us. It troubles us. It's someone who we know, cherish, being among us for some time, and they suddenly go. We are affected. It bothers us. It disturbs us. It troubles us. And it doesn't matter regarding their age, whether they are young or old. We are affected by their passing. That's Brother Bailey is. But I have some good news for you. We are not to be troubled about that. Because one, Jesus has conquered death. And he has sent a message into the camps of the skeptics that he is a Lord over death. Are you here with me? Jesus is Lord over death. Now, there are some people who have sought to put Jesus in the same bracket as some religious leaders that have passed the scene, such as Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, and such like. But Jesus cannot be compared with anybody. He is Lord all by himself. Are you hearing me? He is incomparable. I'll show you how he's incomparable. One. All those leaders that people speak about 
they were born sinners Jesus was born a savior ah hallelujah you remember when Joseph was planning to put away his his wife put away Mary because they were engaged to be married because she became pregnant and while he taught to do that the, the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream I realize dreams must not be taken lightly dreams are not to be taken lightly and that has been something that the Lord has been sharing with me in recent time dreams don't take your dreams lightly the angel of God appeared to him in a dream saying fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost and he further added, and she shall bear and bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name, what? Come on, shout his name, somebody. Thou shalt call his name, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus is incomparable. They were born sinners. He is born Savior. He is the Savior of the world. He is the boss of the universe. None to be compared with him. He has done what nobody else, no religious leader has done. Hallelujah. Another aspect why is incomparable. Jesus predicted his death, burial, and resurrection. And it came to pass accurately, just as he said it. Whoo, glory to God. You remember that resurrection morning? Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, came to the sepulchre. To see what the fate of Jesus has been. And when they came to the sepulchre, they met an angel who descended from heaven with a terrible earthquake. The keepers that, that, that the Pharisees and the chief priests and, and Pilate has set to make this place, make the place safe so that he don't come out from the grave because these disciples was, was, was the disciples might he, he himself said before he died that he would rise the third day and his disciples might come and steal his body and say he's risen from the dead so make the sepulchre safe make the tomb safe but when the angel came from glory land and came down to earth with a terrible earthquake the Bible said those keepers were, fell back as dead men they couldn't stand the presence of the angel of God Jesus was already risen and the, the, the angels rolled us stone away and sat upon the stone and welcome Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and said to them whom seek ye they said Jesus the angel said He is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Exactly what he said came to pass. The bones of those religious leaders are still in the grave. But Jesus is alive and well. He has conquered. Come on, say yes, somebody. Jesus is the conqueror of death. Amen. Can you put your hands together for Jesus, the man? Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 17 and 18, respectively. Therefore, had the Father loved me. Oh. 
Hallelujah. He was loved. He was loved, Deacon Alexis. Love. Ask the question. He was loved because he walked and lived in obedience to his father's instructions. He said, therefore, that my father loved me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Jesus said in verse 18, no man take my life from me. I laid down of myself that I might take it again. This commandment have I received from my father. To lay down my life. Take it again. He said also in the book of Revelation. Chapter 1. And verse 18. When he spoke to John on the Isle of Patmos. He was about. Uh, he was there put aside there. To die. Because they put him in a pot of boil, hot oil. And, 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 and when they took him out, his skin was still intact. The power of God uh, met with, with, with John, and they couldn't handle John. They put him in, they banished him in the Isle of Patmos. Leave him there to die. But it, on that island, the Bible said Jesus visited him. Chapter 1 of Revelation 1.18, Jesus visited him. And said, I am he that was dead and liveth. And behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of death. Beloved, I am talking to you this evening and I'm saying to you that Jesus is a conqueror of death. Yeah. He is the conqueror of death. Hallelujah. Not only, not only why we should not be troubled because he has sent the message to the skeptics that he is indeed the conqueror of death. But Jesus has also sent a clear message to every person in this building this evening and those on the outside and you on the internet and on the live stream. Send a clear message to every person who believes in him and trusts him that they will rise again. At the point of time. Are you here with me this evening? They will rise again. That is home sang a song. Yes, I'll rise again. And no power that can tie me down. Yes, I'll rise again. That can keep me in the ground. All who believes in him will soon rise again from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me, beloved. Jesus has power to raise the dead back to life. Jesus came to give us hope beyond this life. <laughs> this life is short. This life is brief. Every one of you sitting in this building this evening here will never live to see a hundred years. It tells us something. Our lives are short. Soon. But Jesus came to give us hope beyond this life. It was hope of a resurrection. Here's what he says in John chapter 5 and verse 25 to 29. Verily I say unto you, the hour 
voice coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of god and they that hear shall live for as the father had life in himself even so had he given to the son to have life in himself marvel not at this he says the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice some may will hear his voice And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection, damnation. What is interesting to me here is this. When Jesus sends a word in a certain direction, whatever he sends it to accomplish, it shall be accomplished. John says, quoting Jesus, the hour is coming, he says, marvel at this, the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. <laughs> Whatever the master sends his word in a, in a direction, things happen. It comes to pass. Do you remember when Jesus was in his healing campaign? A centurion came to him on behalf of his servant who was sick of the palsy. The palsy was a dreaded disease. It affected your hands and your legs, feet. And there was a shaking, uncontrollable shaking. It was not a nice sight to behold. This servant happened to be a very good servant of the centurion who was in charge of a hundred soldiers that's what the word centurion means so when centurion related his case to jesus jesus said i'll come and heal him the centurion said no to come to my house to heal my servant but speak the word only send the word to my house and my servants will be healed. He said, for, he said, for I myself am a man under authority. I'm in charge of a hundred men. And when I say to one, come, he comes. When I say to another, go, he goes. When I say to another one, do this, he does it. Jesus said, I've never seen such great faith in Israel. No, not such faith. And Jesus, send the word. He spoke it. The word went forth. When the man went to his house, he recognized that this, this servant, his servant was made whole and he inquired what time was it when he was made whole. And they told him what time he was made whole. And the centurion says the same time that Jesus sent that word. Whenever he sends a word, it comes to pass. Also on the Sea of Galilee, which is also Tiberias, when they were journeying on that sea, Jesus from a, from a day's labor, he was at the bottom of the ship taking a rest. And while he was resting, the, 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 the Bible said there was a raging storm of winds at the sea. And the disciples trying themselves to get that water out of the ship and not have taken that water out of the ship. And then they went and disturbed Jesus' rest. They said, Jesus, do you care for us? We're going to perish. If you don't intervene, we're going to perish. And Jesus got up and to the wind. Stop it! <laughs> Glory to God. And he said to the sea, Peace! 
be still. And as he sent his word, there was a calm. This is the Savior I'm talking about. This is the Savior I am sharing with you this evening, beloved. At the grave of Lazarus. Jesus went four days after he had already died and buried. Martha and Mary, when they saw the master come at that, as far as they're concerned, that late hour. Because as far as they're concerned, if he was there a little earlier, he would not have died because he would have sent that word and Lazarus would have been alive. As far as they're concerned, he is four days late. But let me tell you, Jesus is never late. He is always on time. Hallelujah! Glory to God! And they began to cry. They began to make all of their gestures and so on. If you were here, never have died. Jesus said, I am. The person you're talking to, I am. Resurrection. Life. They said, I know that he will rise again on the last day. <laughs> but <laughs> Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Leave it in me, though he die, though he were dead, yet shall he live, like Lazarus. Yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. You believe this? Jesus said, show me where they buried him. They showed him. The Bible said, Jesus went. Of course, he, the Mary and Martha and Lazarus, they were his buddies, they were friends, closest friends. So he identified with their situation. He himself wept. But watch this. He said to them, roll the stone away. It's a little different to how um, tombs are constructed here in Trinidad and Tobago in the West Indies to that of Israel. They had a uh, structure and then they had the person put in inside something like an oven-like then a stone would come cover that thing and seal it. Jesus said, roll the stone away. Move the stone. And Jesus said, Lazarus, ooh, come out. Pastor, and Lazarus came up alive and he said to the people now loose him let him go is a good thing Jesus did not say when he faced that tomb is a good thing he did not say come out had he done that all dead people will have come out of the graves. But he was specific. <laughs> he was specific. He said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. Beloved, this is what will happen for all those who die in him and believe in him you got to believe in jesus he is the authority he is the boss of the universe and that's the reason why i'm following this man because whatever he says comes to pass he will not cheek us with his word he is faithful to his word he will raise us up if we believe in him and trust him he will bring us back to life again though he were dead yet shall he live can you give the lord jesus a good hand of praise if you will hallelujah amen note this huh? in the text i've read a 
And they shall come forth. Verse 28 of John chapter 5. And they shall come forth. Here's what. They that have done good. Verse 28. Unto the resurrection of life. So if you've done well in this life, that means you're serving Christ. You're living for Jesus. Your life is directed in his direction to serve him and glorify him. You've been doing the works that God wants you to do. He said you will be risen unto the resurrection of the Lord. Note that to every one of you in this audience, to those of you on the outside, and to those of you listening to me by live stream. If you have not yet given your life to Jesus, it's a serious cause to do that. He said, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Bailey, Samuel would have done good while he lived. He lived for his life with Jesus. And so he will be called resurrected. We're not all the same. We are not all in the same boat. Uh, there is a separation. Jesus said the last day, he will separate the people as sheep from goat. Sheep from goat. There's a distinction. If you did not do good in, this, in your lifetime and you die, he will wake you up to, to, to give an account of your life. And if you have not done well, you will be damned. Not just for... just for five years or ten years you know like a like a man serve a jail term a jail a jail term five years in jail ten years and then he he may say i will serve my term and come out man but let me say this to us you are no term to serve in hell eh? <laughs> If you didn't make it right and give your life to Jesus in this life, serve him while life is in your body, and you die, and you're risen to give account of your life, of your stewardship while you were here, you'll be banished in that place called hell forever and forever. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Some to the resurrection of life and some the resurrection of damnation. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, not only has he sent a clear message to all his skeptics that he is Lord over death, not only has he sent a clear message. To everyone who be, every person who believe in him that they will rise again he will resurrect you again to live with him in glory but thirdly Jesus has also sent a clear message to all believers everywhere in the world not to be worried about accommodation in heaven. Jesus, you cannot overfill heaven. Heaven will be vast enough to accommodate all of us, Pastor Koshi. Are you hearing me? Elder Alexis, heaven is vast enough to accommodate all of us. Hear what he says. Chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be disturbed. Because he was leaving. And the disciples, they were troubled at his departure. He's about to depart, to go back to glory. But whence he came, they were saddened. But he said, fellas, don't be troubled about my departure. He says, in my father's house, 
many mansions. Thank God, some of us, or many of us, may not be privileged to live in a mansion. But I'll tell you something. He has gone before to prepare that for us, to enjoy life with him forevermore. Some of us, some people would have uh, gotten themselves mansions and uh, never live in it. Even though they built it. Never live in it a day. But they built it well. Fortified and everything. And some may have built mansions and live in it just for a short, a short while. I was... Uh, investigating the life of Michael Jackson. You know, he built a wonderful structure on 2,700 acres of land called Neverland. Michael Jackson got that mansion at the age of 35. Michael Jackson lived in it for 15 years and died at 50. <laughs> so you see, what time. And even the things that we acquire in this life is just for a brief period of time. And that's why Jesus made a strong point to his disciples and to his hearers. He says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth, rust, and teeth, break through and steel, but for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor thieves break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Lay up, store up. And that's why the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, Caleb Allen, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much deacon Alexis as you know that your labor is in, in the Lord. Keep on working for God because God has great rewards for us. Mansions and other rewards that he has already given to us and prepared for us in glory land. This is no time to relax and to live as though we don't know what the future is all about. The future is great and the future is bright if we should allow our lives to be in the way of Jesus Christ as Samuel barely did. That's not the end of his passing. We know we will see him. Will he mean her? You will see him again. That's the, that's the consolation. We all have in Jesus, man. It's a consolation. Hallelujah. That once we live for him and die in him, we will see other friends again as our lives are directed in the way of serving God. I have absolutely no regret in my pursuance after God, after Jesus. No regret. Sometimes I piggyback on my beginning and whence it came, whence it all happened. And I can't help but give God glory for saving me and bringing me into his kingdom to be a part of strengthening lives and helping people to serve God. I can't help but give him thanks. If you are here this evening and without this Savior to who I speak about, you have not given your lives to him. I wanted to say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to serve Jesus. And when you do that, the truth of the matter is, you will never be troubled when you know who Jesus is and what he has fulfilled and done for you. Let's all stand in his presence this evening. Hallelujah. If you are without Jesus, you haven't trusted him as a savior as yet, please lift Please lift your hands and say, Pastor, pray for me. I will, I'm willing to pray for you if you're in such a state and don't know him as Lord and Savior. Oh, bless the name of the Lord.
glory be to God. Hallelujah. I presume that you all know him and are serving him. When you live this life, you know exactly what is happening with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, I thank you for this audience this evening. And those of you online, if you listen to me, you have not yet given your life to Jesus and you want to do that, just lay hands on yourself and say after me, Lord Jesus, I heard your word and I respond to your word now. I don't want to have a life that is troubled, but a life that is one that is at peace. And I want to make my peace with you this evening, giving my life to serve you. Take charge of my life now as I surrender to you from this day forward in Jesus' name. That's for those of you online hearing me and have not yet given your life to Jesus. Now, to those of us here, Father, I just come in to give you thanks for those of us in this building and outside the building as well. Take charge of each heart that the hand of the Lord prevail, strengthen, keep, preserve for your glory and praise in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. The rest of the audience be seated while I want to ask our Bishop, Assistant Bishop Reverend Koshi to come and pray for the family. All family members, please stand. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we give a thanks and we give a praise, O oh God, for the family, the Lord, at this time. I thank you, O oh God, for Wilhelmina and her children. I give a praise and I give a thanks for them. I pray, O oh God, that your hand, O oh God, will be upon them, even as they go through this period. We know, God, it would be a difficult one for them, but we thank you to know, dear God, that you are right there. God, you are not far from them. Lord, we thank you, God Jesus, to know, dear God, that you will strengthen them and you will comfort them, oh God, at yes. this time. Lord, in Jesus' name, you are the one who knows, dear God, what's the best, oh God, for us. And you knew exactly, oh God, what was the best, oh God, for, oh God, for Samuel, oh God, at this time. And Father, we are praying, dear God, Jesus, oh God, as they go through the Spirit, Lord, that they'll be strengthened with might and with power, Lord, in the inner man. I pray, oh God, Jesus, that they will draw strength, Lord, from you, dear God, even as they go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that with a life, oh God, that barely would have lived, dear God, that, Lord, the entire family, oh God, will be totally, Lord, surrendered to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, so that they, oh God, can see him, oh God, on that day, dear God, Jesus, when you, dear God, shall appear in the name of Jesus Christ. So God, I pray that you will encourage, oh God, Lord, a family, oh God, at this time, in the name of Jesus Christ, comfort them, Lord, through your word, mm -hmm. oh God, we have said, oh God, Jesus, yes. that, oh God, you want us to be comforted so that we can comfort others so God we are praying that through this period dear God that they will be able Lord also to comfort someone who needs to be comforted so come oh God Jesus will mean and the children the grandchildren oh God all oh God Jesus oh God we're part of this family Lord we say thank you for his siblings dear God we, we also commit them into your hands uh, Lord our families oh God we commit them into your hands God and we are praying that the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. God will take charge yes. God will minister Lord to every soul dear God you will comfort everyone here today all oh God of us oh God Lord Jesus oh God we're supporting oh God at this time Lord strengthen us all and help us oh God and keep our eyes oh God and Jesus Lord that we'll all live for you and we'll serve you dear God in the name name of Jesus. So we commit, oh God, Lord, this family, and we commit this entire congregation 
Lord, into your hands, the church family. Oh God, strengthen. Yeah, God, Jesus. Oh God, Reverend Allen. Yeah, God, and the entire Plymouth Assembly. Lord, I commit the church. Lord, into your hands. Yes. Lord, strengthen them. Encourage them at this time, dear God, in the name of Jesus. So God, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Be thou glorified, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remain standing as Deacon Alexis comes forward to take us to the end here. Okay, we're just about to do the final two items. There's going to be a short video of our brother Bailey playing the harmonica. This screen is not working, so we'll have to turn our attention to the other screen at the back. Uh, so let me sing a probably two stanza of this then we'll have the video and then we will have the bear of the casket to come and take it back to the front so we will just sing our closing hymn two stanza of that then we will have the video presentation the standard video presentation might be about three or so minutes long so right so the closing hymn is when we all get to heaven all right so we let's sing sing the wondrous and while we walk the pilgrim and then we will do the video all right sing the wondrous love of jesus sing his mercies and his grace all right so it will be placed to the front and just for a few moments to have the families to spend their last moments and then we will move those on the inside we probably allow for those on the inside when you go to allow people to file past so that they can view who didn't get a viewing all right so let's go to the last two stanza when we all get to heaven what a day let's stand rejoicing that will be Oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serve Him every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory. Will the toils of life repay? Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory.
He's still on 14. Yeah, we'll start to Straight across, you're going straight across there. Yeah, 
Come on, give us one, give us one. Well known, so that we can sing in unison. Come on. Come on. We're going to punish. I, we have an anchor. That's a, that's a beautiful song. So it's also in the program. Give your anchor home. That's a